This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Gentlemen, what are you, what are you, what are you laughing about? <laughs> what? Nothing, just go ahead. Just, no, uh, what do you? Just, come on, come on. This is Steve Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. What the fuck are you laughing about? I was laughing at you. Why? What was I doing? Oh, the whole old man blowing your nose bit. Well, I mean, old men blow their noses. Well, I blew my nose when I was a kid. I was a I, I had sinus problems. And I had allergy problems. And I was always the kid, you know, that came to school with the red eyes and, the, and blowing his nose all the time. You remember those kids, don't you? Sure. Well, that sure. was me. And look how well you turned out. Now, was that one? Were you one of the kids that made fun of us kids who blew our nose? No. Well, I mean, what kind of kid were you in school? Um... I was not a good student. And that's not the question. We were all terrible students. That's why we went into comedy and radio. Okay? But, right. but you weren't a good student. Okay. But that's not what I'm asking. There was like the, the in crowd and there was like the nerds. You know, the, the kids who just didn't fit in. What were well, you? Was, then, then you'd put me with the nerds. Really? That bad, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah you know yeah i was also i'm mean, gonna give you an example i got caught skipping school in the first grade <laughs> you mean you, you quit it while you still weren't even tired of it right <laughs> yeah i i, I tr and the, the deal was you, we walked to school we'd walk down the hill mm-hmm and there was, they'd ring a bell, and we'd have to line up. They'd ring a second bell, and we'd go into class or line up, had to line up for class. So when the bell rang, I hid behind a tree. <laughs> and then the second bell rang, and I kept my cover, and then I started walking home, figuring I'd be eating, you know, Twinkies and watching uh, Howdy Doody for the afternoon. And as I'm walking up the hill, Guess who's driving down the hill? Your father. My mom. My mom. Your mom. Oh. No. And you got you got busted, right? Yeah. And then I got expelled in the th second grade. Second grade exp exp Oh, wow. You really were working at it. You were really working it. Yeah, well, you know. Too much time on my hands. I, I guess I was, like, bored in school. Uh... You know something? I don't think there's anything wrong with being bored with school. I think school was really boring. Yeah. And I think that's the fault of the educational system. Because, it, you know, enjoying school is something you should enjoy, but they never made it enjoyable. They made it a drudgery. Yeah. Well, you know, between homework and we're going to have a test today. I mean, it was all tyrannical. Yes, it was. You know, I often felt, here was the thing that bothered me when I was a kid, and even when I was a kid, that they would always ask us questions. And if we answered the question correctly, we got an A, right? Right. So what was that more than social programming? In other words, they were programming us to give out with the right answer. Now, there was a guy years ago by the name of Dr. Banish Hoffman. How I remember that name, I have no idea. Okay. But he wrote a book called The Tyranny of Testing. And his argument was that there are two correct answers to every question, or at least two correct answers to every question. But yeah, what, right? you, what you're doing with tests in school is what you want is the correct answer, the one you want to program into them. Right. Okay. Um, 
The argument being that, for instance, any question you would ask, there are actually two correct answers, one of which may be a little bit out there, but it's a correct answer. Oh, give me an example. Um, oh, let me see here. Let me see if I can give you a good example of it. Uh, what is an animal with whiskers and fur? A cat. Well, let's see here. Uh, is, is, don't dogs have uh, whiskers too sometimes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, see? So the two correct answers to every question. Okay. Um, um, I'm trying to think of a question you would have been asked in school, but there's always a second question you could ask. It's a little more nebulous, a little more ethereal, but it could be a correct, considered a correct answer. Right. But what he, what he essentially was saying is, is that what schools are trained to do is they, you're like a computer. They program you, and if you spit out the right answer, you pass, and if you don't spit out the right answer, you fail. And that's you because... It, and that's you with Pavlov's dog. Right, but what they're doing is, for instance, I'll give you a good example. When I was a kid, I loved the psychology, so I took psychology in high school. And our textbook, chapter eight, I think it was something like that, was all about um, homosexuality and I had a teacher who was gay so he missed that chapter <laughs> he just uh, what's what, we go to chapter chapter 8 next teacher no look, look read chapter 9 <laughs> yeah, you know and, and, and in other cases I remember once in school okay here's a good example of the correct answer the, the, I had a teacher in college who had us read an, a, a, an essay uh, called Communism Versus Democracy. Okay. All right? And the next day I came, we came in and she said, anybody have a comment on the Communism Versus Democracy? And I said, I do. And she said, what is it? I said, well, this article is completely fallacious. It, 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 it uh, has a wrong premise. She said, well, why do you say that? I said, because you can't compare communism to democracy. Communism is an economic form, and democracy is the relationship of a government to its people. And she said, you're wrong. Next. That was it. That was it. Now, I, I think I was right. You know, to this day, I maintain that I was right in my assumption that, that by comparing the two, you were prejudicing the student. Yeah. You're thinking that the the polar opposite of communism was democracy. Right. That's not true because there have been uh, Allende in South America when he before he was assassinated was what he called a democratic communist. He believed in voting. He believed in the will of the people, but he also believed in a communist system as the economic system for his country. Huh. Okay, so we get programmed, and if we get programmed right, we get A's, and if we don't get programmed right, or, or think outside the box, we get F's. So that's why I didn't like school. I found school very, I found it drudgery, I found it, you know, draconian. I mean, tonight we're going to read chapter 47, that's your homework for tonight. Right, 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 right. And it's very nice. So occasionally, I think maybe there should be homework because there are things you can't cover in an hour. But then when you've got like six classes and every one of them are giving you homework, you've got more of a workload than you had at school. In some cases. Yeah. I mean, I just hated I hated school. I just hated it. I think I... I, I, I like school... Probably once I got to college. Okay, all right, but there, that was a, that was a place where people thought a lot. Okay, I, you know, I mean, uh, there was a lot of thinking going on, and and uh, and uh, so that was a uh, you know completely different situation, I think. Right. Uh, you know, colleges always and universities always thought of themselves as a place where we sought out knowledge. Right. It wasn't right, programmed right. into us. So I right. think that's probably why you like college. I never, I, I did two years of college and I got bored with it because I wanted to be a radio, I was in broadcasting. Right. And I, so I wanted to study broadcasting. So I studied broadcasting. 
And then what I learned was, I w by doing it, by working at a job, I was learning more than I ever would sitting in a classroom pretending to do radio. You know? Right. So I quit. I just figured, you know, somebody else needs this seat. Right? I, I don't need it. And I didn't need it. Not, not for my profession. No. I imagine as a comedian, you probably never needed college either. No, but I went to college for different reasons. I went to college, A, to uh, see different, live in different cities in Massachusetts, and I got to live in France for two years. Okay. That was, so, that was a treat. Yes. Yeah. And I got to study with the actual masters, guys that... One guy actually created a style of theater that I studied with. Oh, really? And the other guy was the last living master of Commedia del Latte, which is 15th century Italian comedy. So, so it, it, answer me this. Uh, how did you get to go to France? I mean, was it part of your college curriculum, or how did that I, work? I, my junior year, I designed my last two years. I wrote up my curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I went to a division called Bachelor's Degree in Independent Concentration. Wow. And in it, I wrote in, I would like to go here to study with this gentleman for these reasons. And I had a faculty advisor. And I want to study with this gentleman for these reasons, blah, blah, blah. And they okayed it. So I got credit to, while living in Paris, I was getting credit at UMass. Oh, okay. Wow. That's terrific. And then, and then when I came home, I did a demonstration at UMass. And that was kind of like my test. Oh, wow. What a cool... It must have been... You enjoyed living in Paris for two years, didn't you? Very, very much. Very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's... To begin with, it's a beautiful town. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. And secondly... Everybody is a different word for everything over there. Well, yeah, because it's in <laughs> French. You know what I used to say? I, I always used to argue this, that, you know, American kids are stupid. And people would say, why? I said, well, you go to a place like France, and do you realize that every child in France speaks fluent French? <laughs> I said to a guy, when I first got there, I said to a guy, parlez-vous anglais? And he turned to me and he said, yes, I speak English, but I don't speak American. And he walked away. <laughs> the, uh, the one thing I found about the French that bothered me, though, is they're a little snobby about Americans. They kind of oh. had an attitude about Americans. That's our fault for, you know, after uh, World War II when we basically gave them money to rebuild Paris, rebuild yeah. France, and then we were there and we were obnoxious. We expected everybody to speak English, you know, yeah. walking around. Our well, we had the attitude of we saved your asses. Oh, yeah. And, and nobody likes that attitude, you know. So that's it, it's a, there's a, there's a, there's a conflict there. I mean, it's it's better now. Mm hmm. Oh I yeah. Know, when I was there, they were trying to get rid of all the franglais words. Well, the one day that I I when I, every time I went to France, I felt like they didn't want me there. I mean, I, I went I went to the I remember going to the Eiffel Tower to the second floor where there's a restaurant there and going into the restaurant. And I don't know. I was wearing a soccer t -sh a soccer shirt or something that may have been right. the wrong color, you know. And they wouldn't serve me. I mean, they, a, a waiter and the guy would walk right by me. You really? Know? Yeah, I felt like they really hated me. You know, that's why when I find I was on my way to to Spain. So when I got to Spain, I really love Spain because the Spanish are the opposite. The Spanish will. If you don't know how to get somewhere and you don't speak the language, they will spend an hour with you trying to understand what you're saying and help you. Right. Whereas the French, if you don't speak it perfectly, 
No, well, that's not true, Alex. Well, there's, no, it, there's, there's a big difference between Parisian French and the outside of Paris French, uh, yeah. France. Yeah. They're very helpful, very sweet. Like uh, in southern France, you, they, you couldn't ask for nicer people. You're, you're right. You're right. You're, I've been there. You're absolutely correct. But my wife, my ex-wife, spoke perfect French with no discernible accent because she learned right. it from her mother. Okay, it was. It wasn't like uh, it was like maybe there was a. You got a sense that she was. It wasn't Parisian, but it. She spoke perfect French. Right. And we went to France, and she spoke French to them, and they acted like they didn't know what she was saying. You know, and she spoke perfect French. Right. You know, so I bet they noticed she was an American, so they were going, huh? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, the Parisians are the worst, okay? Well, then go there in August, because in August there's no Parisians in Paris. What, 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 did, what did somebody once say? Um, uh, you could, uh, you could uh, conquer uh, Paris uh, in, what is it, November, uh, 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 August. August. You, could, you August. could conquer Paris in August by telephone. You know. They're all gone. They have a month vacation. Right. Don't ever go there, by the way, in August, because all the stores are closed. Everything. And, and the, the only people there are tourists. Yeah. Yeah. And they have nowhere to eat or anything. Because <laughs> it's all <laughs> closed. Um, but I so hated Paris on um, one trip I went there that I had to go to Spain. And there was going to be a strike the next day in Paris. And I was supposed to be there the next day, so I left a day early because I didn't want to be there for the strike. No, why would you? Yeah. I was also in, uh, where was it? I was in Greece when I was sitting on the tarmac in an airplane and it couldn't take off because there was a three-hour strike. A three-hour strike? A three-hour strike, yeah, yeah. And then when the three-hour strike was over, boom, took off. Yeah. That's absurd. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's just ridiculous. Well, I mean, they do they they they, they take care of business over there, you know. I mean, they're going to have a strike. They're going to have a strike. They don't give a crap about you. But uh, I just remember uh, Paris. I I mean, I love Paris. It's a beautiful city. God, you know, it's just the people that sometimes are hard to deal with. And you're right. The south of France, they're much nicer. You know, people could say the same thing about New Yorkers. Alex. What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> you know exactly what the fuck I'm saying. Well, here's the epitome of New York, right? Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. Right. That's New right, York. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, New Yorkers, I don't think New Yorkers were ever nasty. I think New Yorkers would, if you didn't know how to get to the Empire State Building, they would give you directions. Yeah, yeah, but what if you didn't speak English? Oh, well, then fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, if you don't speak English, we don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, but you wouldn't take the time to help them. Well, that's true. That's true. Right? Well, I, I think I would. I would. I would make my best attempt, but I really don't speak any other languages. I spoke a modicum of, of, of Spanish because... Uh, uh, when I was in Spain enough that you know you you become somewhat semi-functional with that. I found right. I found you you as a former mime. Easy, huh? Easy. No, no, Easy. no. You, you will appreciate this. That in you can speak almost any language to a person of that language, even though you don't know it, by using a lot of mime. I mean, a lot right. of what we say anyway is I want to eat. Right, 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 uh, right. And right. and so, uh, really, uh, I I if you want to communicate with them, usually you can. I mean, for instance, I learn how to say that, okay, in 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 Spanish, okay. So I right. can go into a pastry shop, look at an eclair, point at it, and go that. Right. 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 And I'm, and I'm fine. So a, a lot of a lot of language is body. And uh, you can use your body to get a lot of things across, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. 
so you know, don't need to be nasty and you know. So I, I if if somebody is is making an attempt to you know get his point across using his body and stuff, I'll I'll, I'll stop and help him. But I don't. Uh, I don't. That, how often does that happen to a New Yorker? They meet up with a foreigner who can't speak English, you know. Right, it, right, it, right, it, right. It, very rare. And New Yorkers, you know, by and large, I've always found that New Yorkers are ki kinder than most people give them credit for. In fact, I don't think, do we still have that gruff added, that gruff reputation? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Oh, really? Oh, I'm okay. sure you do. I mean, you know, uh, uh, what I love about... What I love about Andrew Cuomo, outside of the fact that he hits up on women, and that's cool, uh, <laughs> is uh, uh, what I like about Andrew Cuomo is that he is such a New Yorker that I like that. You know, he, he right. they, they say they say he's gruff and he's uh, tough, and it's an atm toxic atmosphere. Well, that toxic atmosphere. Is his attitude? He's from fucking Queens. What do you expect? Right, 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 you right, know? right. I mean, he is of the "fuck me, fuck you" school of arguing. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So you know, they say, well, we did. A lot of people didn't like him because he was gruff and everything. What kind of New Yorker are you if you're bothered by Andrew Cuomo's attitude? You know. So, anyway. I love, I, but uh, it was just, I think it's so cool that you lived in in Paris for, you know, two years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you must have eaten baguettes out your ass. Yes. And, of course and, you, a, lot of, and a lot of camembert, tea, uh, camembert cheese. Yeah. And, and the fact of the matter was, is you were living in Paris as a young man and probably did not have a big budget. Like no budget. Like no budget. So it was always camembert and, and a baguette, right? Right, right. Was camembert cheap enough? It was cheaper than you could get a baguette with camembert all the way across it, the whole baguette, mm -hmm. for three francs. So it's 75 cents. Okay. Cool. And that... Now, if, if it was brie, it probably would have been like $3. Oh, Okay. But but you that would fill you up for the day. Yeah, well, that'd be a snack. Because when I was when I was a kid living in Hollywood, because I was with the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and I was on a military budget. All right. Uh, I um, uh, I I subsisted entirely on Kraft macaroni and cheese. Okay. Because I could buy a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese in those days for 19 cents. Right. And I could make that up, eat it, and it would keep me full for half a day. You well, know. also don't forget, to supplement my, my budget, I would perform on the street. Yeah. I'd play my guitar in the Metro. Yeah. Um, the weekends, I would go to the place called Pompidou. Uh -huh. And I do pantomime for the tourists. Yeah. You know, I get stuck in the box. I'd pull the rope. I'd. Yeah. Well, whatever it took to get my, their money in my hat. Did you wear white face? Yep. Whole you, thing. You did the whole thing with the white face and the whole thing. Yeah. Whole thing. Now, who who set up that style? Is that was that an old style or did Marcel Marceau establish it? No, because you can actually. Um, the movie, uh, The Children of Paradise. Right. Les Enfants oh, de Paradis. Les, les, les Enfants de Paradis, which is very... Les Enfants de Paradis. Yeah. Uh, it's about Pierrot. And the reason he wears a white face is so people in the back can see him because they didn't have rake theaters. Oh, okay. Rake theaters, by the way, are when, you, when you're in a theater and it's kind of goes up. That's right. A, that's a rake theater. Right. Yeah. Because they, they were more performing uh, on the street. Yeah. And wasn't Marcel Marceau in that picture? No. No, he wasn't? I thought he was. My The guy who taught me <laughs> corporeal mime yeah. is in that picture. Wait a minute. If I remember his correct, name correctly, Jean Perrault Bel Barrault? Jean-Louis Barrault. Uh, Jean-Louis Barrault, right. 
right? right. And, and um, Etienne de Crew. Etienne de Crew is my professor. Aren't we getting terribly snotty here, folks? <laughs> hey, we've run out of time, so we can't get snotty anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hey, great talking to you again, my friend. Let's do it next week, okay? All right. I'll put it in the book. L ladies and gentlemen, that there is Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Well, here I am, folks. Uh, a little bit out of sync. I was uh, that was a little bit out of sync. I want to talk. I tell you for a moment before I go completely out of sync. Uh, why I ran that? Um, it's an old interview. In fact, it, it was quite out, out of sync. I noticed. Um, and uh, the reason I ran it is because I haven't been able to find Stephen Pearl. Uh, Pearl Kravitz. I got a hold of uh, Kravitz. I get a hold of him like on Tuesday. I write him a note and I say, hey, we're going to do it tomorrow. And here's the link to the Zoom. And I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, the next day, boom, like clockwork, he, he calls. Okay. Uh, this week he didn't call. So I called him on the phone and I got an answering machine. So then I sent him a text and I got no answer. And I sent him an email and I got no answer. And today I called again and left a message for him on his phone. And I didn't get a message. I have no idea what, what happened to Steve Kravitz. And I'm worried about him because he was very good about this. It was almost like he went out of his way to make sure, you know, that I was, uh, uh, that, that he was calling and, you know, talking with me and doing the whole thing. So I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, hopefully he'll show up okay, but I thought we'd run an interview with him today, uh, just in case. All right. Uh, let me see. What happened to Charlie Wallace? Huh. It's funny. I uh, I, uh, I put uh, uh, Charlie Wallace here. Charlie Wallace called, and then he stopped as soon as I got on. And the only person we actually have on here, you see... Part of part of the reason. Well, let me let me show uh, uh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Huh? Oops. You, I don't think or your your uh, your uh, audio oh, is on. There you are. I'm okay now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, I um, um, I had a real problem today. Uh, I I have this thing that if you go to my site uh, GabNet, you notice the on demand. It has all the programs listed. Those programs listed. Well, the program that does that is called Feeder. And I went and I opened up Feeder today, and uh, it wasn't happy. And when and everything that I had in there was completely lost. So I bought a new version of it, and I uploaded from the site some of the files that would fill it in. And I spent most of the day restructuring the whole thing. So that... That, that was my whole day. So I kept putting up things saying, I'm not doing a show tonight because I just didn't know if I'd have this fixed by then. And it worried me that, you know, if I didn't do it, uh, if I didn't get it done, I would sit around here worrying about it and so on and so forth. But um, anyway, where is everybody? You know? Yeah. I mean, it just, That's very strange, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, when I'm down to one person, folks, <coughs> right? Is it yeah, particularly I'm not the one that uh, easily. You're not the one that is verbose. On time. You're not, it's not that you're on time. It's a, you're, you're verbose. I saw Charlie uh, Wallace there, and he had uh, he then disappeared. So, really? Yes, I don't know what happened. But anyway, so it's just you know. and me. Yeah, I guess so. You know, and uh, I, I so. you know, if I don't get many more people. So I, I really enjoyed the uh, discussion about powers. I, yeah, uh, I had no idea that he was there for two for two years. Yeah, well, I I loved Steve D like crazy. I mean, I think the world of him, and the fact that I didn't hear from him this week. Give me more of your face, okay? Just move your. Oh face. sure. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, there. <clears throat> that looks much better. Uh, uh, the fact that I haven't heard from him, uh, it it really is quite mysterious to me. 
So I have no idea uh, <laughs> what that's all about, you know. It's hard to figure out. Yeah. So I, I hope he's okay and I hope he's fine, but I don't know. I'm worried because he's, he, he's usually better than that, you know, and if I... Yes. If I wrote him and I texted him and I left messages, mm -hmm. he should have gotten one of those and would have written me right back and went, oh, I yeah. forgot or whatever. And, uh, you know, so. Uh, so that's Did you I'm hear doing. that uh, Clinton is in a hospital now? What? He is? Yeah. Yes. What, what, when, when, did he go, when did that happen? A couple, of, uh, a couple of days ago, apparently. I don't know if anybody that's knew right. about it. He's in, he's in Southern California. Out of Tonight, mm, yeah, he's uh, in uh, UC Irvine Medical Center. Well, I almost wound up in the hospital today. Wow. Well, no, what happened was, I was sitting here, and I, all of a sudden, this thing went bad on me. Okay, and so now I'm trying to fix it, and it's driving me nuts. And I'm going, oh God, I gotta, I want, want to fix this thing before I have to go on the air because it's the thing also that on demand lists all the shows. Oh, there okay, is. you know. So, uh, and when you go to, uh, if you ever go to the Roku channel, it's why each of those things has all the shows listed. It's, it's all from that program, and it went bad on me. And so mm -hmm. I'm there trying to fix it, and all of a sudden, my stomach started aching horribly. I mean, where I mm -hmm. couldn't, if I sat down and tried to get up, it hurt. And I don't know what it was, but I went and laid down, and it went away. So. I don't think it's anything serious because it went away, but you know, uh, I was, I was, it was, it was crazy. It was just crazy. So, and you something ever you hear, ate. you ever hear of anything like that, Alan? Yeah, something you ate a couple hours later, it gets into your I, stomach. I didn't eat. Oh, didn't have breakfast. Didn't have anything. Mm. But anyway, it just really hurt me when I, after I was sitting here. And I got up and it was just, and then I went to sit in the bathroom and I, of course, had some uh, interesting results there. Uh, but uh, when I tried to get up, I was in pain. It hurt me to get up. Yes. Wow. Yes, Charlene. You know, I find that, you know, I'm getting older now. And if I don't have breakfast or something, it's like uh, my stomach goes crazy. Like they say that older people like to have like breakfast and a lunch, you know, more more so than like dinner, like, you know. All I had to eat today so far was soup. Oh. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Something light, yeah. <laughs> Something light, yeah. So, anyway. so sometimes when you, you know, as you're older, like, like Charlene was saying, sometimes you, you wake up and there's nothing in your stomach and the stomach yeah. acids have a, have, a, have a field day in there and it hurts. Yeah. And usually <laughs> you can go get a piece of bread or some toast and. Leave the butter off of it, at least for, until your stomach gets under yeah, control. Yeah, but it ached. It really ached. I mean, it was... Uh, I have stomach problems. I know what that's like. I've had it my whole life. Right. Now, wait, Charlie, I, I invited you. Uh, oh, there we go. There's Charlie. What, Charlie, where'd you go? You had trouble with your computer, right? Charlie? You had trouble with your computer? Yeah, my computer crashed just in with uh, Steven. Just cr crash. What do you have, a PC? Yeah. Yeah, they like to crash. Now, although I this PC I have here very seldom ever crashes. Um, but uh, I I just, I, I, I went crazy today when this thing, and so I was, people were watching on and off. I was watching, no show tonight. Yeah, I'll do a show tonight. No, no show tonight. Maybe there'll be a show tonight. No. <laughs> Because I, it, it, just as I thought I had it fixed, it stopped working on me, you know. So I, I couldn't figure it out. But, but I'm okay now. So what the hell, you know? Um, oh, what do you know? And now my, uh, mm. well, I just oh, there it goes. Okay, uh, <laughs> I, I've been having trouble with my, uh, uh, also with my. Uh, mouse because I it uh, I let it go down low and uh, then I charged it I, I was charging it earlier this is I, you're gonna love this I was charging it earlier using the charging plug which we all use for the for the mm -hmm. iPhone mm -hmm. the only thing I didn't notice is this side wasn't plugged in 
<laughs> so I had it there for like an hour and it wasn't working. I went, oh, the mouse, now the mouse is broken. And then I went, oh, stupid me, you know. You know, I had a similar thing happen last week. I was cooking on the, attempting to cook some soup. I turned the burner on next to the burner that I was using. 20 minutes later, I come back and the burner is like going full blast. And I'm like, why did I turn that one? Oh, I didn't even turn this one on under the soup. Oops. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're all yeah. all really dumb and stupid. Yeah, and, there's, well, and there's hardly anybody watching tonight. So. All right. Good night. Good night. I'll <laughs> see you later. Okay. Anybody want to do the show for me? You know. Phil uh, Phil did a good thing. He does his monologue said people come on in. What he I, I thought he was going to go off on and say, you know, uh, Trump really deserves a second chance or some oh, stupid geez. thing. You know, but he did a monologue, and he got somebody, the lady from uh, Wyoming, yeah. nice, late, nice lady, oh, yeah, she, she came great. on and laid into him. I thought it was sweet. <laughs> yeah. You know something? I, um, 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 yeah, th that was nice of him to do, and she was good. She was a good guest, too. Yeah, she, she was. was. Good guest. I hope she calls again. Um, but anyway, so my stomach bothered me today, and then this whole break thing breaking down. And I just keep going. Every time this happens, I go, okay, I've had enough of this. All right? I'm finished with this. And then tomorrow we're supposed to have a thing with our, our uh, lawyers. Okay. Uh, with the lawyers getting together to try and solve the problem. The judge always that's, gets that's it. Not in the, that's not in their interest, though. Make it go another 10 years, collect another 100000 uh, uh, Well, you know, it, it, uh, it, it so... We we're supposed to have this meeting tomorrow, right? And my uh, my lawyer put in a hardship thing for me, yeah. saying that I ha that see if you have have a hardship, like I had cancer, and you're then more susceptible to COVID, they say they don't they can't evict you until January. Oh, right. So he yeah, said he wanted to put in for that, not that anybody's. Uh, it, well, it, it's it's not that the landlords aren't trying to evict us. The guy who was living here is trying to get us out of here. Okay, so he filed for that, and the judge turned it down. Wow. Hey, uh, I mean, hey, pal, I, I've I've had I have cancer, you know, uh, and I'm also over sixty five. That's the other comorbidity mm -hmm. that you can ask for a hardship on, and he turned it down. This judge hates, he, I don't think he hates us. He hates our lawyer, I think. His uh. assistant hates our lawyer. Uh, and only because our lawyer had the audacity to say to her, well, you're wrong on that. Law yeah. says blah, 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 and she has an attitude about him, you know. So we're supposed to have this meeting tomorrow, and so today he writes me at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. So uh, we need to talk. Okay, he turned you down. We need to talk. Okay, so okay, fine. When do you want to talk? And I said, well, we, I can do it before one o'clock or I can do it after 1.30 because I have a call there. Marjorie's at work, but she can do it until three. And he gets back <coughs> to me and says, I'll let you know later on in the day. Never heard from him. Hmm. Never heard from him. And then we wrote him back and said, we never heard from you. And he didn't write back. Maybe he's with Steve Kravitz. I don't know. That's right. You know, it could very well be. But anyway. Well, so folks, are any of the rest of you ready to call the program too? Although we do have some good people here. Uh, oh. uh, I got nothing to do. It's raining like cats and dogs, so I can't do anything here. So you can't play, but you can't uh, coach baseball. No. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't leave the house. <laughs> Is it that Bloody bad? all throughout Austin. So. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Mm. Feast or famine? Feast or famine, exactly. Well, I don't know. You know. I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, so, so anyway, for Steve Kravitz, if he's still alive. Well, I know. I looked. That's the first place I always look. I go. Oh, okay. Steve Kravitz, obit. You know. Yeah. Which. I hate to do because it's awfully morbid. Well, he should get back to you then. Well, mm -hmm. unless something's happened, 
you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. something can happen. Y yes, uh, Shirley. You know, um, you guys were talking about um, Shatner, mm -hmm. you know, last. Yeah. Is that Bezos, the Bezos thing? And all that? Yeah. Yeah. I think you should have said, you know, Bully Go, I'm going to Bully Go where no man has gone before or something. And that was it. Because did you listen to that whole big thing that he was saying? It was like, well, I mean, it, you know, over actor, his, he was his, like th his thank yous to, to Jeff Bezos took longer than the trip itself. Yeah. yeah. Then he wanted a second pin. He and Bezos was like, well, I'm sorry, uh, Bill, but like, uh, we only have enough, one for each one. He wanted two pins for What's some What's the pin for? I got to tell you something. This Bezos deal is nothing. Okay. He's sending people up 66 miles, and they're not even staying there. They're not floating around the Earth oh. once. They're not going into and orbit. They're just coming right back down. In fact, he went wild like it was some amazing trip for like a week or something, and he was like, like crying, and he was like, uh, "My God, when you see, you yeah, know, well, I mean, it was when you got that. when you got a chance, Bill. We'll put you on a roller coaster, okay? Yeah. You know, <laughs> but this is just a very expensive roller coaster. Then uh, he could. And he couldn't get the pins to go Bezos into the fabric of the suits they made. And then I wondered, because he's a little rotund. I mean, I hate to say. A little you know, rotund? Yeah, have, but he, he also happens to be 90 years old. I know, you know. but I, you know, I don't mean to. Hmm. You know, but he is a little rotund, you know. Yeah. The tone is good for him. That was a little, you know, it fit him, you know. Yeah, but it I mean, I just, I just think Bezos is, I, it's terrible what he's doing. And what he's doing is he's cheapening the idea of space travel. He's cheapening what it's all about, that anybody can send up a rocket. Well, I got news for you. If you watched what was happening, it went up, it went up, then it lost its booster rocket. Then it kept going. Then it started slowing down. It started mm -hmm. slowing down. It started slowing down. And when it finally got to zero Gs, they were floating around a little bit. I think they only were floating around for about three minutes, something yeah. like that. Well, and then the thing just starts coming back down. Right. right. You know, it just went up and then, boop, you know. Yeah, big deal. A couple of, you know, floating around a little bit for a little tiny while, and that was it. Yeah. I, yeah. And then they say Shad a documentary about it or something. He's going <laughs> to a documentary, I heard. Oh, really? Yeah. How long is the documentary going to be? <laughs> right. 11 minutes? I, I mean... I, I just couldn't believe the whole thing. I was like, wow. Yeah, I don't understand. Oh, look, my uh, my transparent bottle. See that? I can see it. Because it's my green bottle. I don't like to use the green bottle, but yeah. if I don't, I'll just have nothing but green left. Hmm. Well, we can see the white cap. Yep. You can see the white cap. Yep. You know what, Alex? See it when you floating? Did, <laughs> when you did the other interview, your eyes were the before eyes, and today you have the after eyes. Oh, that's right. Did, did you did you know? Did, was there a noticeable difference? Yes. They look much better now. Yeah. Yeah. Well. They look more open and awake and everything. You look so much younger. You look like you're no more than eighty-three. Oh, right. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, isn't anybody else going to call? What? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, huh? I don't know. Well, I know. A lot of people are watching the Giants and the Dodgers, I guess, or the football game. Well, I know near you had a lot of baseball. Is there baseball yeah. on tonight? Uh, yeah, but I think it starts later, though. But, yeah, the Giants play the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's probably on now, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I've lost him until baseball's over with. So. Yeah. Yeah. What have you? Um, he hasn't been on in a long time. Yeah, about three weeks, four weeks. Yeah, yeah. Well, got down to the end of the season and then into the playoffs. Yeah. But anyway, one of the reasons why I decided finally to do a show tonight is because I've been so lax in doing them lately. I didn't want to have another night off. So yeah. as soon as I saw that I had this thing working, uh, I was. Uh, uh, I was ready to go on it, you know, uh, but I think I fixed. Well, you the must be feeling a little better today. What do you mean, a little better? You know, physically. 
Uh, um, I was feeling pretty good when I got up today. Then I got a letter, note from my lawyer. Oh, yeah. Right? The first thing you want to wake up to is a lawyer letter. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, if we had, if this is like a money pit, all right, where you buy a house and you got to fix it, but then it costs you a lot of money to fix some of it. But then there's another thing that needs to get fixed, and another thing that needs to get fixed. Before you know it, you've spent a hundred thousand dollars. You got to keep fixing it because you've already spent a hundred thousand dollars on it. Well, I we've already spent almost a hundred thousand dollars on lawyers in this deal. Now, granted, that's over a period of about nine years, but nevertheless, it's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And so I, I said to Marjorie, I said, if this weren't such a fucking money pit. I'd say let's cut bait and run, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can't, we can't afford to. We have to keep going until the lawyer yeah. gets to suck up every penny we have. All right. Even how much you can't quit now, right? Yeah, and we'll, and you know, there's a, there's a chance we'll lose here. There's no reason why we should lose. We didn't do anything uh -huh. wrong. You know, we're so innocent; it's ridiculous. We should have never been dragged into this in the first place. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but nevertheless, you know, there's a chance we might lose. Why? What? We, we didn't do anything wrong. We just rented a goddamn apartment to somebody who wasn't allowed to rent a goddamn apartment. Mm. So, anyway, I, you know, I'm tired of it. But how, how do you like my beard now? Uh, uh, it's getting longer. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. I'm, that was one other thing I've done. You know, Alex, my son has a beard. He looks like Grizzly Adams, I always say. And um, mm -hmm. he is using minoxidil on his beard. At first, I was like, what's he afraid? He's losing his hair, you know? He's putting it in, like, into the spaces to fill it out. <laughs> it's expensive, that minoxidil, you know? Yeah. Minoxidil on your face? I never heard yeah. of that. I've never heard of it either. Somebody said that's what he's doing, trying to make his beard fuller. Because <laughs> I know he's not, you know, he doesn't need it on his head. I don't it works on your face that well. I, I Probably not even I've work. Never heard of it. I know. My son is crazy now. He's ordering, like, shampoo and conditioner and all kinds of products every day from Amazon. You know, How, old, how old is he? 28. Is he losing his hair? He's got premature gray. He's got some gray in his hair. Yeah, but is he, how about he's lost hair? You know? No, I don't yeah. see him losing hair, though. But maybe uh, I, he's afraid he is or something because of the gray. I don't know. I, I'm using in my hair, uh, just for men, gradual graying. It, you, you, you shampoo your hair regularly, and then you put this in for a minute and wash it out, and it gradually changes the gray. It'll go to black. It's one color works all and so you, when you get it to the level you like it where i want some gray then you stop for a few days and you do it again that type of thing is versus there, is, just all of a sudden dyeing your hair i just looked is there some big sports thing happening tonight because we're down to 21 people watching we never get that low wow i mean the playoffs huh playoffs. Baseball playoffs. 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 Yeah. Where's George uh, Mark? He was there last night, right? Playoffs are going to be going on tomorrow night, too. Maybe, yeah. maybe I just won't go on until the playoffs are all over. I mean, this yeah, is you Now I'm down to 20 people. Take, take, a, take a vacation. You know, you've been working too hard lately. 20 people. What? What is with this? You know? I mean, come on, folks. I, I would have I'm, expected a lot more because uh, I, Jeff's back on the show. Yeah. Well, I came yeah. back tonight rather than take the night off because of all these problems because I wanted to, like, you know, I didn't want to let people down. Well, right. I, I, if I sign off now, I've let 21 people down. Mm -hmm. you know? Maybe what you ought to do is do the Monday pop-up and then do Tuesday and Thursday and take off the weekend, have a, a three-day weekend. No, I think I would probably do. I probably do like Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. I mean, what? I mean, I might still only get twenty-two people. Well, oh, we're up to twenty-two people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why don't you sing for us, Jeff? Now we're back down to people. twenty-one again. 
<laughs> no, you don't want to hear me sing. Hmm? Not at all. I yeah. said to Jeff, why don't you sing? We'll get more people. He says, you don't want to hear me sing. So tell me about Clinton. <laughs> yeah, Clinton, you know, I found out that he has a aortic valve and ah. another device. Mm. In I 2000, 2010, he had a four-way bypass. Yeah. What? I didn't know that. When, when was this? In 2010. It's only come out today, Charlene, because he's in the hospital in Southern California. Is he? I didn't know that. With some kind of infection. Yeah, nobody yeah. knew. Hmm. He's got an infection? Like the, what is that called when you go to the hospital and you get that infection? I, I looked, I can't. Sepsis. Sepsis. Is that what he's got? It's not, is it? I mean, I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know either. Well, wait a minute. Let me see it? here. I, I wonder if, uh, let's see, Drudge has anything about it. I'm sure if you go to Fox News, they'll claim that he's dead. But you know, hey folks, if, they, if, this show, if this show is too boring for you, you could always call up and join it. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Let me see. Otherwise, I don't care. Let's see here. Well, Prince William slams space billionaires. Mm -hmm. uh, what he says? Oh, uh, why uh, are we are trying to? What 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 what, what, did, what did they say? What do he say? He's slamming the bit. I, I agree with him, but not where Musk is concerned. Uh, but where, what is that? Oh, that's ridiculous. Isn't he the one involved with the uh, pedophile guy? You hmm. mean that Prince William? Or? Prince William. Prince William is. Uh, oh, it's Prince Andrew. oh, the guy that's Prince in there Andrew. now. Well, Prince like, William uh, is married to, in, married to Kate Middleton, right? Oh, he's the heir to the throne or something, right? Yeah. Um, well, didn't, they, didn't they disown him or something? Because he lives here in, in this country No, that's now? Harry. That's the it's other Harry. guy. Oh, the Harry, ginger. sorry. The he, ginger. <laughs> um, 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 William is the heir and uh, Harry's the spare. The heir uh, and the spare. Prince William slams billionaire space race and says they should focus on fixing Earth problems first. That's what I said. And studying <laughs> intervention hours after Amazon chief Be Jeff Bezos' recent uh, trek with, uh, uh, you know, William Shatter. Fox News is so positive. Pre former President Clinton is receiving care in California Medical Center, spokesman said. Then the next line down, Bill Clinton has had nightmares about the future of the country ever since leaving <laughs> office. Wow. Well, some of those nightmares, some of those nightmares happened the last four years. Yeah, so. right. No. Yeah. The nightmare was Donald Trump got elected. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, 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 to begin with, I've got to say this to William. You know, I hate these people who say about space travel. Well, we have more important things to do here on Earth. I agree. We have a lot of important things to do here on Earth. Why can't we do all of them? And here you've mm -hmm. got a bunch of fat cats who are trying to get us into space. It's not they, they're not using your dime. Okay, right. they're using their own dime. Mm -hmm. And so this whole idea that they, they could be spending their money on, on more important things. What more important things? What could be more important than us getting off this goddamn planet and going somewhere else where maybe the yeah, human we might have to, right? maybe where the human race can survive? <laughs> Who's mm -hmm. this guy on chat? Who's this guy on chat? Charlie Wallace. Is Abraham Lincoln still alive? Of course he's still alive. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that's just an example of a question that only has one answer. Right, right. <laughs> I got it. I just, it's cute. So. Uh, well, no, it has a third answer. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's a good answer. Yeah. I, I don't think Lincoln would have made a, a good boxer. He couldn't take a shot to the head. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> don't don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at it, Charlie. I know. Do oh, not I'm laugh at, how at it. it was. You're only encouraging him. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You know it's funny. Everybody on Jack's show, even the people from this show, when they get on Jack's show and I tell a joke, everybody loves it. Well, because Jack is so bad at telling jokes. <laughs> oh. That, that anything in comparison to that. Mm hmm. I see. Yeah. I mean, I've heard him tell jokes, and he's, he really has very bad timing. Uh, funny, did anybody hear? You. Huh? Did anybody hear that the uh, Rolling Stones are never going to sing "Brown Sugar"? 
anymore. Like you know, because well, uh, they said they've sto they've stopped singing it. They didn't say forever. Do you, uh, do you know what the uh, lyrics are to Brown Sugar? Gold Gold Coast uh, slave ship bound for cotton fields. Yeah, but I Sold never. Sold in Market Town in Orleans. Brown scarred old flavor. No, he's doing all right. Hear him whip the women, just around midnight. When I thought yeah. of the lyrics, I said, you know. It kind of is racist, I think, right? Uh, yeah, well, but it's um, um, the lyrics. Brown sugar, how can you taste so the good? The thing is, and I, I think uh, uh, hold, just hold like on, a hold on, good. hold on. <laughs> Sorry. I never, Sorry. I, I never paid attention to the lyrics. How many here did? Well, I, I've never paid attention to it, but I think it's funny. You ask the, 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 the group, hmm. have you ever heard the lyrics? Charlene's repeating it, and then you stop her. Well, she's reading it. Oh, reading? No, I'm no I, I, me I memorized them. You know, Did you really memorize them? Because I went out, I could never understand what Mick was saying, like that Jumpin' Jack Flash. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I went out and bought a guitar book that had the lyrics so I could know what he was saying. Well, because the songs. here's the thing that um, most people have said, they never, never heard the lyrics. They never paid That's attention to the lyrics. Gold Coast slave ship bound for cotton fields, cotton fields. sold in the market down in New Orleans, scarred old, uh, scared, slaver. scared old slaver, knows he's doing all right, hear him whip the women just around midnight, mm -hmm. right? Brown sugar, how come you taste so good? Uh-uh, brown sugar, you taste just like a young girl should. Drums being he cold said young, in the blood. He said black sometimes, he said black but sometimes. But the question is, is it, is it anti-black? Is it anti? Is it pro-slave? What is it? Is it pedophiles? And, and no, no, everybody is saying it's anti-slavery. Anti most people say it, it, it's anti-slavery. Yeah. Well, nowadays though, everything. Well, is why would you stop sister. singing it when I'd be very proud to sing that song? I'd be very proud I'm that people were fine. I'm kind of upset because I always liked it. I'd be happy that after like 50 years, people finally paid some attention to the lyrics. Yeah. Well, maybe it will cause you know people to pay attention, but yeah, I don't. I guess make is politically correct, you know, or what do they call? Not politically correct. What is it called again? That catch word, you know, for oh god, what do you? I, I'm sorry, like you know, it's not politically correct. It's uh, cancel culture. It's cancel a cancel culture. culture right? Yeah, yeah. It's not woke. Right. What does that mean? Do you, do you know, Charlie? Come on, you're you're hip to what the kids are saying. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hip. You're I'm black. You should woke. you should you're black. You should know what woke means. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not black. Speaking of that's racism, young. that's young people. It's not black people to say woke. Oh, you know more about it than I do. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so so we've got uh, we've got so nobody knows what Clinton's in for. Yeah, right. Now I want to know what happened. Did he collapse or something, or they just hospitalized him? You know what? It, How old is he? Up? He's got to be seventy-five or something. Like oh, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Echo. How old is Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton is seventy-five years old. Thank you. That, that was, was a good guess. A youngster. Yeah. Yeah, really. my age. I'm sorry. I'm, is I'm, Hillary at his bedside and everything? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Well, well, the way, you know, I don't know if you've been in the hospital during COVID, but they don't let anybody in anymore. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, my, my, well, my question is, why is he in a hospital in California when he lives on the East Coast? Yeah. California Because he was in California. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some in California. meeting or whatever. <laughs> And he felt crappy, so he went to the doctor or went to the hospital. Good, good thing he did. He's, he's pretty yeah. sick. Yeah. Well, according to uh, NBC News, it's not COVID. Okay. Uh, UC Medical Center, Irvine, is where he's being treated in Southern California. Mm -hmm. He's got an infection, but he's his white cells are dropping which means the infection is going away he's been taking IV antibiotics they don't say what the infection is but as long as he gets better that's all that matters i guess mm -hmm. yeah yeah well it depends you... upon where the infection is too well yeah in 2004 i was wrong on the date on 2004 he underwent triple bypass mm -hmm. at new york's uh -huh. presbyterian hospital mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're up to 29 people watching now. Yay. Yeah, we're talking about Bill Clinton. I think he was one of our greatest presidents in my lifetime. Well, I'm watching this thing. I I'm watching this thing. It's, uh, I don't know if you're watching it. American Crime Story Impeachment, which is all about the Monica Lewinsky situation. Okay, a dramatization. And huh. they've got this woman. She's a Broadway actress, but she is, she's not pleasingly plump she's fat okay and squat and that's not monica monica was pleasingly pleasing. plump okay and i wondered how monica would feel about finding that they well, they went out and got this kind of dumpy fat girl to play monica and then i look at the credits and she's the executive producer <laughs> <laughs> Trying to save money, I guess. Yeah. She yeah. actually looks pretty good. She was on Stephen Colbert last week. Oh, really? She really, she had, does look good. You know. Monica? Yeah. 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 I thought we're, she, I thought we're she, lucky it wasn't Michael Lewinsky. But I thought she was, she was really, um, my, who's Michael Lewinsky? Now, I'm, making, I'm making a joke. It went over your head. I just, I, I said Bill Clinton's lucky it wasn't. Michael Lewinsky. Who was Michael oh. Lewinsky? There was no Michael. Monica, Michael, it's close. Except for it's two different. I, I don't get what the, would you, hey, hold on a second. Forget it. Forget no, it. no, explain the joke to us. I, you know, <laughs> would he have been kicked out of office if it was a guy that he had a sexual encounter oh, with? Oh, back then, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Absolutely. That happened That's to the governor of New Jersey, right? Because, uh. He had right. that. Uh, he said, "I'm a gay American." He had to apologize for that. Yeah. He wouldn't have to do that yeah. today, though. Right? No. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop is about to join us here. Probably to defend put him it, down about his jokes. To, to defend his comedy timing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Hello, Jack. How are you, Jack? Oh, he has turned his audio. Oh, back on. then, yeah. There we go. He's on. His audio's on. That yeah. the governor of New Jersey, right? Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Turn his audio down. Are uh, you, Chris Christie, uh, he was a real winner. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, Jack, are you here to defend your comedy timing? Uh, no, 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 oh, no, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I was listening to you guys about two things. <clears throat> On brown sugar, I want to give equal time for the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. All right. Uh, Curtis Mayfield from The Impressions uh, did a song called Mighty Mighty. Wait, wait, did he do that or Sly did that? Uh, yeah, the Mighty Mighty Spade and Whitey. Wow. That's wow. A good one. <laughs> My old dear dope smoking buddy who taught me how to rival some of the tightest joints in Bernal Heights. Sly Stone did a tune called Don't Call Me Nigger Whitey. Don't Call Me Whitey Nigger. Wow. So wow. I think I think the Stones thing is really kind of mild and, and, and certainly uh, much more uh, endemic to the message that you guys were talking about. I never thought it's, it's a big it's a big I, I never you never pay attention to the lyrics of it, did you? Uh, well, no, well, no, I heard the lyrics when it yeah. first came out. Yeah. And I always thought it was anti-slavery. Mm -hmm. um, besides, they said, black women, yeah. once they get control of you, they put a whipping on you. No, no but the point is that, that he's, they're going to stop doing it. And they say they're yeah. going to stop doing it because of just all the the problems with doing anything about race today. Yeah, yeah. You right. know they I mean, didn't, they didn't feel their song was particularly racist in any no. way. But, no. but they just they didn't, they, but there were just a lot of people out there get really pissy about it. So they said, well, I forget think, it. Well, I anyway. think we're living at a time where people are going to be pissy about something. I got right. pissy last night with uh, Amy Manuel. Yeah. Well, Boy, that's, that's have... not difficult. <laughs> oh, that's not difficult. <laughs> She's one of the people I like. Brown sugar does taste pretty good. Absolutely. Just like indeed, a young girl indeed. should. Especially if it's laying on my girlfriend. Right. Well, I don't know about laying on your girlfriend. I've never <laughs> met your girlfriend. But, uh, uh, she's but, uh, she's actually been squashed flat. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 300 pounds landing on her lap. Not a good 
fight. And, and, and sold in the market down in New Orleans. But that's another story. Uh, the other thing I heard you guys talking about was Bill Clinton. And Bill and I are the same age. And we both have had open heart surgery, as you guys know. <laughs> and I just hope that Bill is in the hospital getting an internal penis pump. <laughs> He's exactly. supposed to be, you know, like he doesn't need that, right? Well, he, it really, God. really, we need to have him not be able to get erections. <laughs> right, know. he was too Erections crazy have that. gotten him into way too right. much trouble. Hey, you know, I want Bill to get one so I can explain to my wife who says, you don't need that, why I want one. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, I was talking about Monica Lewinsky. And I always, I always uh, felt sorry for both of them in that situation. Oh yeah, I felt that he was being seduced by a younger woman at a time in his life where he was very vulnerable to that sort of thing, and uh, she was. I think what America did to her was terrible, yeah. just well, terrible. But also, I blame Hillary Clinton for some of that because uh, Hillary could have said. What goes on between me and Bill and Bill's girlfriend is none of y'all's business. Keep the hell out of it. Yeah, but they needed it. But what they wanted was they wanted to get her. They wanted to get him to lie about Monica yeah. Lewinsky in the Paula Jones deposition. Mm -hmm. And that's what got him was well, lying. That, well, from mm -hmm. a historical standpoint, the only presidents that apparently did not have affairs with someone uh George with well, George Washington mm -hmm. uh except maybe for his law partner before he went to Washington according to some sources Abe Lincoln mm -hmm. uh Jimmy Carter mm -hmm. uh and of course Richard Nixon who nobody would go to bed with well, wait a minute. you've forgotten a very <laughs> important that, one you've right? forgotten a really important one yeah. Ooh. Barack Obama. Yeah. Barack Obama, yeah. He wouldn't mm -hmm. have cheated on on Hillary uh, oh, on, no. on Michelle oh, no. because no, she'd no. kill him. You know. Right. You see those guns on her voice. Yeah. <laughs> I was wanted to say to Michelle, look, would you like to find out if those stories about old disc jockeys are true? <laughs> what stories are those, Jack? Well, did you you did you never watch WKRP in Cincinnati? You know, uh, yes. Uh, one of the guys that replaced me at KMPX in San Francisco before I came to America was Howard Hessman. And old disc jockeys get laid. I speak as the voice of experience. Uh, when I was doing a uh, 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 big band here in Dallas, my mm -hmm. wife said that I was the late midnight fantasy for blue-haired women all over the state. <laughs> so, just but, but, clarify something, Jack. Old disc jockeys get laid. Does that include your hand? No, that includes your mouth. Oh, uh, well, sorry. Yeah, anyway, uh, I'll tell you something, though. Uh, my, I have a, a kind of a relationship to Monica Lewinsky in oh. that she, uh, Monica Lewinsky's mother, Marsha, I think was her name, mm -hmm. uh, divorced her mother, her father, rather, and married a gentleman by the name of R. Peter Strauss, who oh, was yeah. the guy who owned WMCA that I worked for. He was my boss at WMCA. This is before he married Monica Lewinsky's mother. Six degrees of separation. Then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, my, old, my old boss at that period was screwing everybody. You know, James Brown, you know, uh, 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 I remember one night at one of the James Brown stations uh, where I was I was group program manager for four years. And we were talking about how many children out of wedlock did James have because he was being sued by some woman in California over a new one. And I was standing out in front of this building in Atlanta and there was a. Uh, the head of James Brown Broadcasting. There was the head of James Brown Enterprises. 
-hmm. there was James's road manager, mm -hmm. and there was a guy named Sinclair Pinkney who had been in the James Brown band uh, since 1954. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to remember how many kids did James have other than the two that were legitimately his. And so we started mentioning cities and some of the guys knew the names. And uh, shortly after that, James comes out of the building and says, what are you guys standing around laughing and talking about? And somebody said, James, we're trying to remember how many kids are you sending uh, child support payments to? And we, and some of the guys started calling out names. And James said, well, wait a minute. Let me do my James Brown voice. Wait a minute. You're forgetting about the baby in Canada, the baby in London, and maybe that baby that's mine in Japan. So when I got home uh, to the lady that I was living with at the time, I said, you know, I think he must, when he shaves, he must nick himself and bleed sperm to have that many kids. You know, you know, how many kids did uh, Muhammad Ali have? God only knows. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Echo? How many children did Muhammad Ali have? Muhammad Ali had seven children, including Muhammad Ali Jr. Okay, so seven. Oh, children. that's that's nothing. That's, that's nothing. nothing that we know about. That's nothing, my Alex. What? Alex, yeah. you know how we were talking about Mick Jagger? Mm -hmm. Doesn't he have like ten kids? I mean, I'm not sure. I have no ask idea. Her, ask her how many he has. Seriously. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay. Echo. How many children does Mick Jagger have? Mick Jagger has five children. Not oh, that's not a, a, a piker. A piker. A piker. A piker. Yeah. Horace Jagger. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, yeah. Uh, that's that's that's, that's piffle. That's nothing. All right. What about My, George Foreman? Oh, 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 oh God! But they're all named George. How can you tell? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Echo. How many people? How many children does George Foreman have? Here's something I found on the web. According to reference.com, as of 2014, American boxing legend George Foreman has 12 children. If oh, that's a lot. That's first a lot. Names are George and well, who bear his name, wow. Georgette and Frida George Foreman, whose middle name comes from her father. Yeah, no shit. Uh, it, that's almost as many kids as my uh, grandparents had. My dad's mom and dad, they had 14. Um, who? My my dad's parents, my grandparents, had fourteen kids, four wow. boys, eleven girls, and before he died, I had the pleasure. Well, what of did your did, did, did in your household? Did your father come home and all he said was hello? I'm I'm pregnant. <laughs> <and> goodbye. <laughs> well, well, that's what my grandmother said. This was my dad's parents. Yeah, and my grandmother said at a family reunion, which we used to do every few years, mm -hmm. she said, "I I." so hated to hear cyrus pull up in the driveway because i knew in 10 minutes i'd be pregnant again <laughs> <laughs> none of them were um half brother and sister no they were all like no no woman. no that poor before, woman but before the before the old man died <clears throat> i asked him you had four sons and uh a you had four sons and 10 girls. Those were the ones that lived into adulthood. They had a couple of kids that died in infancy. Uh -huh. And I said, how come you only had four boys? And he said to me, if if you had any kids at all, you'd know that you got to do some serious screwing to have boys. <laughs> and he, he said, I gave Write that down. I, he said, I gave that up after five kids. I decided, I said, I'd tell Virginia, oh, Virginia, you get on top and you do the work for a while. I got a job in the morning. Well, I have zero kids, so, you know. Well, I may have one out there. I don't know. Well, I thought you had one, yeah. No, I might have one, but uh, I, would, I wouldn't know. I, I, quite frankly, I think there's a good chance it's Howard Stern, but, you know. <laughs> I heard that he was conceived orally. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Alan, you see, what people in radio, what guys in radio, what we hate is you finish up your show 
and you come out of the studio and you walk out, out into the lobby and there's some guy standing there who's about oh between the ages of 25 and 35 and he says uh, excuse me are you jack bishop and you go yeah and he says did you work in knoxville tennessee in 1968 and does the name dorothy mcclellan ring a bell with you you lying son of a bitch <laughs> I say, and then you go, oh, my son, you're, you're home, you're home. I'll tell you what I had happened to and me I once. What I had happened to me once is I had somebody, um, a, a father, get a hold of me and say, I want to talk to you. And I said, about what? And he said, uh, you got my daughter pregnant. I said, who's really? your daughter? And she said her name. Never heard of her in my life. Okay. I said, I do not know her. And I couldn't have possibly gotten her pregnant because I don't know her. Well, turns out, turns out, up. turns out the girl was lying. When the father asked, who's the father? The first person she thought was the guy she was hearing on the radio. Radio. I just, I just uh, supposed to show your popularity. Yeah. Do you but, were, but, you know, you if were, I could get you, if I could do one thing in my lifetime, it would be to get that? you to stop telling radio stories. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the reason is I hate radio stories. I I hate radio. I love working it and I love being in it, but I hate most of what goes on in the radio business. Well, I always said it is the most fun I ever had with all my clothes on. Uh, I would I say it was the most fun I've had. No, I'd have to say with my, I'd have to say it was stuff with my clothes off. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I was uh, I was a vestal virgin until I was, you know, three, seven. <laughs> no, I didn't lose my virginity until I was, until a, I was, I was 18. a virgin. I was a virgin until I think I was seventeen, maybe. I was eighteen, oh. and then I, I I made up for lost time. I just you know, you, I, we heard about that. You heard about that. <laughs> yeah. See, so that's why I want Donna to hear that Bill Clinton is getting one of those internal penis pumps so I can c continue to make up for lost time now that my time is running down, if you get my drift. Well, I've, I've run out of time for that. No. It's all behind me now, you know. Well, you see, that's why, that's why I turned to Black and Decker. No, but this, <laughs> this is why I've said that the, the day I started having, stopped having a sex drive, which was just a few years ago because they started diddling with my prostate, uh, but I stopped having a sex drive, is the day I got my dignity back. Well, wow. you see, I can't, I, can't make that, I can't make that claim. I've still got my prostate. Uh, no, I've still just, got my prostate. But yeah, and my prostate is in pretty good shape, according to my doctor. It's just that my hydraulics aren't what they used to be. Well, uh, that's a problem too. But the thing is that um, that. But I've got to say that I can't complain. That the years that I had sexually were happy years. Okay. Well, that's bully for you. Uh, as I go down that long dark hallway to senility. Mm -hmm. I still want to have a couple of good times, you know. Uh, I went to this uh, uh, this conference where they were talking about this internal uh, penal pump. Boy, you, was, you're obsessed with penal pumps. Better living through hydraulics. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Would you and want it, to have one of those things in you? Would you really? I know several guys that do, and they do not complain. Well, I'm sorry if you've got to sit there and say, "Wait a minute, dear." You know, come on. You know, I used to do that. Now I'm doing this. You you can get a tattoo on your penis that says "Inflate to 15 psi." <laughs> right. Yeah. That's Austin Powers has that right. The penis. Why is that any different? They're saying, wait, let's wait 15 minutes for the blue pill to kick in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I know uh, a guy that has one, and he's got one of the better ones, uh, according to uh, his wife. And she says he's had it for like 10 years, and she cannot 
uh, explain how it works, but she says it works and it keeps on working just like that ever ready bunny. Uh, uh, Charlene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something just popped into my head, Alex. You might be. You see, now it's no, funny you to... should mention the inflatable penis and then something popped into your head. <laughs> no, no. You were talking about penis pumps. And didn't Jean Harlow's husband have a penis pump or I something? I don't think they had a no. penis pump. They didn't have Wait, I sure don't follow that stuff. I guess girls follow it. No, his, um, her husband. Jean Harlow, a movie about it's called Harlow with Carol Baker. Yeah. And I think that movie. Um, Maybe Shecky would know that. Do you know who was, you know who was married to Carol Baker? Oh, I know your friend. Yes, Jack Oh, Garfine. I've always wanted to tell you that. Can I tell you real fast that I love that movie, Something Wild, and yeah. that was Jack Garfield's movie. Garfine's. Garfine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. I said his yeah. name wrong. I'm sorry. But um, I've always loved that movie, Something Wild, with Ralph Meeker and Carol Baker. Yeah. And it turned out that it was his film, and I, that really... Uh, stuck in my mind when I saw that it was I never great thought story. that I never thought that Carol ba Baker had a great career and then I started looking it up and she really did I mean oh, she yeah. did to begin with she started out with baby doll which made her the number one sex object in America and mm -hmm. then she did right after that or maybe just before that I can't remember which giant and then she mm -hmm. went on doing one film after another how the west was one so on and so forth. she had quite a career going for her you know, plus the film she made with Jack. I mean, she was uh, she was terrific. You know. Well, if we're going to talk about movies, I'm going to bring up one that I rewatched for the first time since 1970 this weekend, and that's the classic Putney Swope. Does anybody remember that? One? My very good friend uh, directed that film. Oh, uh, I know the name. Do you know who directed it? Yes, some guy that's got a kid that plays Iron Man. Yeah, now. Actually, actually, it was Robert Downey Sr. Oh. And Robert Downey Sr. and I were friends. In fact, I was supposed to be in Greaser's Palace, but he couldn't afford to fly me out to Texas where they were shooting it. And uh, he, um, we used to go out to breakfast, and he would bring his kid with him to breakfast. And I keep thinking, was I nice to him? <laughs> you know, did I treat him well? You know. I, 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 I don't want to think that maybe I, you know, didn't treat him the right way. But uh, anyway, a little Robert Downey Jr. was having breakfast with us. So. Oh. And then he turned into a drug crazed actor. That's because he met, he hung around Alex for breakfast. For, for a while. <laughs> for a while. And then he straightened his life out. And yeah. Uh, yeah. he, you know, did very well for himself. You know, now yeah, he, I got to do well for myself. Into, yeah, you he got, was you breaking got, into houses and getting into yeah. bed with people's children and stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack's got to go. He's got to go do his show, which goes on right after this. And it's oh. called The Intersection. And you people should call him because you didn't call me. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, Jack. Pleasure to be here, Mr. Bennett. Catch okay. you in a little bit. And in fact, I will start rolling the theme here. Uh, and thank mm -hmm. everybody for having joined me tonight. The people that did see some people join me. I thank them for that. Okay. <laughs> How was uh, that? Hmm? Yeah, my face does I was look here. my face does look younger, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. It actually yeah. Does. yeah, it looks great. I'm not even thinking I'm thinking of not even getting the bags done now, you know. Uh, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. Uh, we really appreciate it. Love having you here, Alan. Good seeing you, Charlene. Nice of you to join us. And of course, the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace. We always like having you here. We hope and pray it rains tomorrow night. And uh, by the way, um, uh, thank you for, uh, for joining us this evening. Everybody, and also to Jack Bishop as well, who's next with the intersection. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a give big give, give a big wave, big wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, that's our people of the uh, citizen panel, and they're gone, and they're gonna go. There we go, and I probably will get back into sync now because the. Zoom stopped. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow night, provided everything works okay. Uh, <laughs> and things don't break down. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back here. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
Tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, wear a mask. But better than that, hey, go get yourself a, you know, a little, uh, little some juice, some vaccination, okay? In fact, get yourself three of them. Then you'll really be safe. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye, everybody.